Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be a video on freezing in pro play, but also just freezing in general, because it's a strategical tactic which isn't being utilized, even though it should, and I've been harping on about it for a very long time now. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some small clips from recent weeks of pro teams around the world in all different regions being given opportunities to freeze and how it might be able to benefit their team composition relative to the game state and why they should have elected to freeze rather than just simply playing ping pong with the lanes. I've talked about it a lot in various casts in the LCK, but I've chosen to highlight a few select clips here that will help some people visualize what I might be talking about. For those of you that don't know, a non-cannon wave is worth approximately 105 gold. A cannon wave is worth 195 gold. This isn't even factoring in that a normal wave is also worth 265 experience, and a cannon wave is worth 357 experience. So every single time you can cause waves to go away from your opponent, if you end up getting three non-cannon waves and your opponent misses out on all of them, you essentially killed them. Not even factoring in the experience. If we add cannon waves to the mix, then it becomes very easy to actually kill your opponent several times over throughout the course of a mid-game into a late-game transition just by freezing waves. You end up gaining access to resources that aren't elsewhere available on the map, and you force the opponents to react by creating an objective on the map even when others might not presently exist. This video isn't going to be super detailed and explain the ins and outs of every single situation, but rather an overview of the scenarios in which freezing could occur. At the very end of this, I will show an example of what can happen in a game where a freeze is actually executed between two pro teams. In recent weeks, I've been talking about freezing more and more, and a lot of times I've had arguments presented to me that teams or champions were able to do stuff that realistically they couldn't, in the sense of how much damage they could do, or I would be told that vision over a certain area of the map was important, even though if you factor in the current game state and the scaling of the team composition, perhaps, the vision might end up just being luxurious. You don't necessarily need to see what is happening in a certain area if it doesn't matter to you. This is a concept that I've talked about a lot since I've come over to League of Legends from StarCraft, where using very little bits of information that you had access to perhaps 30 seconds, 45 seconds, or a minute ago allows you to deduce what might and might not be possible by the opponents in coming minutes. Using stuff like this, you can end up determining what might end up being luxurious vision, and thus not something that you realistically have to fight over or panic over. This is also why I've been a very heavy advocate of Blue Trinket and using them as temporary map packs, and then trying to use this type of reasoning to come to conclusions about what you should do in the game, rather than just having wards everywhere. This is very akin to how Terran, using scanner sweeps, would pilot themselves in StarCraft 1. The first example that we're going to be looking at is of a recent game between TSM and Team Liquid Week 9 of the LCS Summer Split. In this example, Bjergsen hands off a wave to Jensen and gives him the ability to freeze given that there's an incoming minion wave from his base as well that's going to be pushing into Jensen. Because there's no neutral objectives on the map, and there's no realistic way for TSM to force Jensen or his team to fight, he can take the minion wave and freeze it in front of his top tier 2 turret. If he ends up doing this, it requires TSM to react to the freeze, or they end up hemorrhaging several hundred gold and XP per minute. Even if the response from TSM is to move into mid lane and break the mid tier 1 turret, the gold gained is still not larger than the gold gained by Jensen executing a freeze up in top lane. If TSM tries to invest resources into breaking the freeze, it forces their members to overextend even though they're in a currently losing position. In addition to this, TL's champions would be able to react first to TSM attempting to unlock the freeze. This creates a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario where TSM does not have a very good position in the current game if Team Liquid opts for a freeze in top lane. This is also amplified by the fact that Team Liquid will scale better than TSM the longer that the game ends up going. So because Team Liquid are in a winning map position and scale better, if they end up freezing, they end up creating an objective on the map that forces TSM to contest it or continue to hand off 
winning lane states to Team Liquid. If TSM ends up moving all of their members to the mid lane, and if Team Liquid end up losing their mid tier 1 turret, they can again look for a position to not only freeze the top turret, but now the mid lane as well, thus creating a similar situation in top lane, now in mid lane. They can continue to hold this freeze up until the Infernal Dragon would be coming up, or until the minions simply would unlock it naturally due to the proximity of the reinforcing minions. By that point, however, they still would have had a large gain of experience as well as gold that the opponents weren't able to access. Next, we come to a clip from the LCK. We see Faker and Chovy in bottom lane and Faker very low on mana. There's also no package available for Corky in this current game. Chovy continues to shove a wave into Faker before moving up into River. Faker eventually ends up recalling and thus grants Chovy the ability to begin potentially causing a freeze to happen in bottom lane by making the minions stay on SK Telecom's side of the map and then moving over to the Golem camp and eating that before waiting for SKT to push the wave back into them. Because in this game, Ocean Dragon is the next one to spawn, it's not beneficial to either team. Jarvan and the rest of Griffin are able to play on their side of the map and within their own jungle, and now SK Telecom are forced to make Corky overextend in order to break the freeze in front of Silas's bottom tier 2 turret once it gets there. Corky can't play safe and has to invest more resources, and in addition to that, need Clid's help. Griffin is making SK Telecom overextend, or they run the risk of losing several hundred gold each minute. This is another example of freezing from a recent NALCS playoff match between CLG and Optic, where Ruin is handed an ability to freeze by Dokla, who's already down two levels. At this point in the game, there is no real neutral objective on the map, given that neither team realistically can just attempt Baron. The mid-tier 1 turret for CLG is a little bit hurt, but CLG wants to keep scaling up. They want their Camille to get stronger, they want the Azir and the Varus to both get stronger and work towards their second and third completed items. Instead of freezing the bottom wave, Camille elects to shove the wave out immediately. Even if Optic rotates into mid lane to get the tier 1 turret, so what? They end up getting the mid tier 1 turret and they get a little bit of gold for themselves. The same amount of gold is going to be lost in the side lane to the Camille who is freezing, but it also doesn't account for the experience that Camille would be getting. After they end up getting the mid-tier 1 turret, CLG can then look to do the same exact thing in mid lane, because Optic are the ones that have the pressure to make something happen. Optic don't scale nearly as well as CLG, and Optic don't have nearly as many options available as the game draws on. Because Camille is already so far ahead, the fact that she could be the one executing the freeze and threatening to grow stronger and stronger creates a ticking time bomb for Optic that they don't have a proper way to answer to. Instead, what we see is both teams handshake over fighting non-stop, which means that CLG is working directly against what their win conditions are and what OPTIC actually needs to happen. If CLG asks themselves, or if OPTIC asks themselves, what do we need to do at this point in time, they would probably answer that they have to keep accelerating, they have to get more advantages, they have to get picks so that they can convert into Baron. Regardless of what CLG might want to do, so preventing that is all that they need to do. Now that I just showed you guys a couple of clips in which, in recent weeks, in pro play, we saw potential freezes being available, and aside from that, there's a lot more. I want to show a clip that actually shows, well, what happens when a freeze occurs. This is a replay from over a year ago. This is a match between BBQ and KT, in which the Zoe in the clip is freezing the wave up in top lane. We follow the enemy mid laner that would be assumed to be matching Zoe, and what the enemy mid laner is able to achieve at this point in time. We'll note that BBQ is ahead in the game, and despite KT having two mountain dragons, they're not able to simply just do Baron. Eventually, the minion wave will get pushed back into KT, which we see occur here. Aurelia, however, ends up making a mistake and shoves the wave right back into Zoe, who had up until that point just been freezing constantly. We also see Urgot executing the same thing in this replay down in the bottom lane. All of this time, Aurelia does not have anything to do, and KT do not have the resources to actually force a fight or invest that heavily into trying to breaking these freezes. You can also see the pings on the minimap, which is KT trying to draw attention to what is happening in the game. 
we can see that they attempt to group in the mid lane, but that it's able to be easily repelled because the champions simply don't have the ammunition necessary to really siege turrets at this point in the game. Aurelia is left without anything to do. So that was just a bunch of clips that occurred in recent weeks, and if I go through more and more games, and even the very same games of some of the clips that I showed, there's more instances where freezing would have been an ideal thing, and it's partly why I've been talking about it so much for the, about the last year. Freezing is bizarre to me in that during laning phase, it's a pretty commonly understood thing at the professional level, and it's often utilized to do the very same things that I'm trying to advocate teams to do in these clips, and just in general, but seemingly once the mid-game comes or once the mid-to-late transition ends up coming, people don't seem to realize its power. Freezing isn't necessarily a very difficult thing to do, and in a way, a lot of people probably think that this would cause for more barren games. I don't really think that's the case. I think the fact that there are objectives that are able to be manufactured by certain teams and thrown onto the map that demand attention actually creates for more action and thus potentially more fights depending on how certain teams go about trying to break them and thus unlocking the freeze and maybe trying to even secure it for themselves. This is also one of the reasons that I feel like Drafting in Season 9 in particular is as important as it is because naturally teams that scale a little bit better than their opponents are able to better utilize these strategies because the way to accelerate in the game is not strong enough. 